Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Uh, today I want to revisit a problem that I did about a year ago, which was finding the equivalent resistance of this bridge network. And I consider this particular example. Uh, a lot of comments came to that video and a lot of people said, you need to do the delta Y transformation to solve this problem. Because you could do it much easier. Because the way I solved it before was using Kirchhoff's loop rule and Kirchhoff's um, junction rule. And it takes a long time to solve the problem. You can get to the answer. Uh, to be honest with you, I had never even heard of delta Y transforms or Y delta transforms, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so I did a little bit of research and really it is the best way to solve this problem. So I wanted to go back and so thanks for the comments. And here's the solution to uh, this particular bridge network. So we're gonna find the equivalent resistor of this. You can't use simple series and parallel. You can work at this problem all day and never get to the same problem. But I'm gonna show you how to apply the delta Y transformation to this problem. First, we'll look at what the delta Y transformation is. And then there's actually two ways to apply it to this particular bridge problem. So I'll show you both ways and we'll get to the same answer as we previously did uh, using the uh, loop rules and Kirchhoff's junction rule. Okay, so again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you like what I do on this channel, consider subscribing. If you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll get back to you. All right, if you've never seen the delta to Y transform, here it is. Okay, so what I have here, I have six resistors, but uh, they're really grouped in two different groups. Okay, we're gonna first identify what a delta network looks like. And a delta network looks like everything on the outside here. So we've got three nodes that are connected by three resistors, okay? We have RA, RB, and RC connecting in a triangular form like that, and that looks like the delta, right? The Greek letter delta. Now the Y network, on the other hand, uh, looks, again, there's three different resistors um, connecting those various nodes. Now it looks like a Y, except in this case it's upside down. Um, so if you <laughs> rotate it by 180 degrees, it looks like a Y. Now there is a way of connecting or relating the three resistors in the Y network to the delta network. And you can go vice versa. There's also a relations to bring you back in the other direction if you wanted to. But what we wanna do now is we wanna start with the delta network. We know those resistors from the bridge and we wanna rewrite this in terms of a Y network. And the reason this works actually is because the equivalent resistance between nodes N1, N2, is going to be the same value whether you use the Y network or the delta network. So although you've changed the topology of it, you still get the same equivalent resistance between any of the two nodes, N1 and N3 and N2 and N3. So let me write down what the transformation is and then we'll apply it. There's two ways to apply it to this bridge network. Uh, we'll apply it to that to solve what the equivalent resistance is. If you wanna see the proof of why this works, I'll make another video and I'll link it down below. All right, so the transformation looks like this. Again, we want to write expressions now for R1, R2, and R3. So let me go ahead and do that. And it's pretty easy to remember, actually, which is why I really like this method. So R1, again, all of these three are going to be written in terms of the three resistors that form the delta network. And it's very easy to remember. First of all, they all have the same denominator. And the denominator is simply you sum up the total resistance of the delta network. So you're always going to divide by RA plus RB plus RC for all three of them. Okay, so that's pretty easy to remember. And one more. Okay, so that looks the same. Now to know what goes in the numerator, it's also pretty easy. If we consider, um, we're going to start with this one, R1. Uh, all you have to do is simply multiply uh, these two resistors right here. So the numerator for R1 simply looks like uh, the two that are kind of adjacent to it, right? So that would be RB multiplied by RC. If you apply the same argument now for R2, what goes in the numerator? You simply multiply RA and RC. Super easy. RA and RC. And likewise for the last one, for the resistance R3 for the Y network, you multiply RA and RB. All right, so that's it. We're gonna now apply these formulas. 
we're going to apply them to uh, solve for our equivalent resistance of the bridge network. And again, there's going to be two delta, two possibilities of delta networks that we can simplify. So let's go see how we do that. All right, so here's my original bridge network over here. And here's the transform that we just looked at. Now again, what we're going to do now, we're going to have to pick a delta transform. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the top triangle over here. That top triangle looks exactly like this triangle over here, this delta, which is N1, N2, and N3. So what I can do is I can actually replace these three 1 ohm resistors. I can replace them now with a Y network. And the Y network is going to simply look like this. Now when you substitute that, so you're really just changing the actual circuit, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and redraw it. This will be C. That's the same point. Now instead of going off on two branches like this, what I do is I end up going straight down. And the resistor now is going to be the resistor R3. All right, now what happens? Well, now we're going to branch off into R1 and R2. So that's okay. That we can do. So let's branch off in each direction and draw both of those. And now we basically just redraw what's left in the circuit. So this will be the Y network. Let me make sure I labeled everything correctly here. This is R3, this is R2, and this here is R1. And these are the equations to find them in terms of the original 1 ohm resistor. So that's easy. There's going to be a bunch of 1s everywhere. Now we have to draw the rest of the circuit, right? We, we really haven't done anything with these 2 ohm resistors. So remember, my original network was connecting A, B, and C. So that's still point C. Let's go ahead and make sure this here is still point A, and that's still point B. And now all you have to do is go ahead and draw the rest of the network the way it was previously drawn. So we had these two segments, and then I had these two other resistors over here. On this side here, I had a 2 ohm resistor, and on this side here, I have another 1 ohm resistor. And now you just draw the rest of the circuit the way it was. You don't really have to draw the power supply, but running a little bit out of room here, but let's go ahead and finish this off. Okay, so this is what we have. When you redraw the circuit now using this a delta to Y transform, this is what it looks like. Let's make sure we don't change any of those. So this here is still a 2 ohm resistor. This here is a 1 ohm resistor. And now all we have to do is find what are the values of R1, R2, and R3. And these are the transformations. So let's go ahead and do that. So R1, again, all of these three resistors are simply 1 ohm, right? So RB would be this guy, that's 1 ohm. RA would be this guy, that's 1 ohm. And RC is also 1 ohm. So that means you have 1 times 1 divided by 1 plus 1 plus 1. It's going to be 3. This is simply equal to 1 third. All right, my resistor R2 in the Y network is also going to be equal to one third. It's the same thing. And likewise for the resistance R3 is also equal to one third. Okay, so that simplifies everything quite nicely. Now all you have to do, if you look at the configuration now of the Y network, and even though we have these still, these remaining uh, two resistors that were exactly the same as in the original bridge network. Now you can see we can apply our rules because what we have here are two resistors that are in series with each other. On the right hand side we also have two resistors that are in series together. And then you have to combine everything because you're going to have two branches that are in parallel. But everything, now you can use all of your existing tools that you know in order to simplify this network and define the equivalent resistance. So let's go ahead now and go in the last step and do that. Okay, so now here's the network. I've just put in all the values over here. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So on this side over here, we have uh, two resistors that are uh, in series with each other. We could solve those. On this side over here, we also have two resistors that are in series with each other. Now we could solve those. So let's start with that. Um, so both of these guys here, this is simply going to be two plus one third. Uh, this is six thirds plus one third. 
7 thirds for everything on the right hand side. Uh, on this side over here, now it's a 1 third plus 1, which gives me 4 thirds. All right, now if we compare this left side to the right side, we have two branches that are uh, in parallel with each other. So what we can do now is find an equivalent resistance for everything. Let's just kind of circle it over, let's do a circle around it. Let's find the total equivalent resistance of this guy, since we know we have two branches over here. Uh, both of these are in parallel. If there's only two resistors in parallel, one of them is 7 thirds, the other one is 4 thirds. Uh, all you have to do is multiply them and divide it by the sum. So if you multiply them, you get 7 thirds times 4 thirds and divided by the sum, which is 7 thirds plus 4 thirds. Okay, so this gives me 28 over 9, rather. Let's try that again. And divided by, this looks like 11 over 3. And I just rearrange this fraction a little bit, 28 over 9. Uh, 11 divided by 3, just put 3 up here. You can factor out a 3. We're left with 3 down here. Okay, so here we're left with this R equivalent of that triangular section over there, that diamond network, uh, should be equal to 28 uh, over 33. All right, now we're not quite done. Now we still need to combine it. We need to combine it to this one third ohm. Right, so the total equivalent resistance now, our equivalent total for our network is going to be one third plus 28 over 33. Okay, uh, that's pretty easy. Uh, this becomes 11 over 33 plus 28 over 33. All right, put everything together. What do you get? 39 over 33. Uh, you could simplify that a little bit. So our equivalent, uh, divide by 3 on each term, you end up getting 13 divided by 11. And that is the same answer I previously got using Kirchhoff's laws for that original bridge network. And it took me a lot longer than uh, using these techniques over here. Okay, so that is kind of one way we were able to solve this problem. There is another delta network that you can actually use and use the same transformation. Uh, let me just kind of just spend at least a minute just to highlight what that other network is and how you would apply that. But you're going to get to the same answer at the end of the day. Now, there was another delta to y transformation that we could have used for this network. Again, if I look at the original bridge network that I had, in the previous case, I took the top triangle. However, this is also a y network right here, right? The bottom triangle over here, although it's inverted, Right? I could still use these three resistors here. These three resistors, they form a delta network. And again, you can transform the delta network into a Y network. So at the bottom, it's going to look kind of like this, right? like the way I drew it over here. And we can still apply our same equations. Again, now the equivalent resistors, these R1, R2, and R3, they're going to be different because they involve three different resistors from the original delta network. So what you have to do now is just find what those values are. Again, all three terms involve the sum. In the previous case, the sum was equal to three. In this case here, the sum, if you add them all up, it's going to be equal to four, right? So let's go ahead and write all those down. So R1, R2, and R3 for this case. All right, R1, uh, let's just call it uh, this one over here. Uh, the way you find this resistor is by you multiply both of those two terms. That simply gives me one and divided by the sum, which gives me four. All right, what about R2? R2 is the one we're going to call this one over here. And R2 would be kind of fitted here between both of these. It's fitted between the one ohm and the two ohm resistor. So if you multiply both of those, you get two. And again, divided by four. So this simply gives me to one half. And the last one is R3. Again, R3 is between a one ohm resistor and a two ohm resistor. Uh, so that simply becomes, again, two over four. So you're gonna get one half for this one. Now, if you go ahead and you know all the resistors, you can use the same tricks now, simplify both branches. At the end of the day, what you're going to get is the equivalent resistance between point C and point D is still going to be equal to 13 divided by 11. 
So try that out for yourself. Uh, make sure you're able to combine all of those. Anyway, I hope this video helped you. This is kind of a really good trick to know, to simplify complicated networks uh, where you can't simply use series and parallel from the onset, right? We have this intermediate step of this transformation that brings us from a delta to a Y network. Thanks for watching, everybody.